Hi there, let's spend a couple of minutes looking at the Prebisch-Singer hypothesis. The Prebisch-Singer hypothesis, or the Singer-Prebisch hypothesis, depending on which, one, which way you want to start, was a challenge to the work of David Ricardo, who developed the idea of comparative advantage. The argument from Prebisch and Singer was that low-income countries heavily dependent on extracting and then exporting natural resources, uh, and leaving those the prices to market forces, would be condemned to permanent poverty because, over the long run, they argued, the real prices of primary, good, primary products such as coffee or cocoa or oil um, would decline in proportion to prices of manufactured goods such as smartphones, cars and washing machines. So the argument was that there's a long-term decline in real commodity prices largely because the income elasticity of demand for commodities is lower than the income elasticity of demand for manufactured goods. As primary commodities fall in price, that worsens the terms of trade for primary exporters. And therefore, effectively, these countries were destined to decline in the long term. And if they wanted to avoid this, they would be better off focusing on import substitution policies, in particular intervention to achieve rapid industrialization, growth of manufacturing industry. Well, the evidence for Prebisch Singer, of course, was built largely in the 1950s and to the 60s. And indeed, if you take a country like Zambia, uh, largely dependent on copper and cobalt, the terms of trade for Zambia during the 60s and into the 1970s and into the early 1980s were particularly low. This chart shows the terms of trade for Zambia over the very long run. But actually, since then, particularly since uh, the mid-1990s and into the last decade or so, the terms of trade for many primary exporters have improved. And Zambia is a good case in point, although, as you can see, the terms of trade have worsened in the last couple of years, partly because of the Chinese slowdown. So the Prebisch-Singer hypothesis is not particularly borne out by this chart. The modern reality is that labour-intensive manufactured goods uh, achieve, manufactured and put together, assembled through huge economies of scale, have become much cheaper, in part because of globalisation and the shift of manufacturing to lower labour cost centres. So in that sense, manufactured goods, think of your toaster, your smartphone, uh, think of your basic household appliances, they have become cheaper in real terms. Whereas in fact, commodities, including many primary commodities, such as copper and oil, and cocoa and rubber, those commodities have gone up in price in the long term. Indeed, many commodity exporters have seen their terms of trade go up. That's a big opportunity for these countries, but also poses some risks, all of which are linked to the natural resource trap. Indeed, if we look at the terms of trade since 1960 for sub-Saharan Africa as a whole, and for world resource rich countries, natural resource rich countries, you can see there has been a significant improvement in their terms of trade, particularly over the last 20 years or so. So the Prebisch-Singer hypothesis, which was slightly pessimistic and argued that primary exporters were destined to decline in the long term because they were too dependent on the export of raw materials and farm products at a, at a falling price, the Prebisch-Singer hypothesis has not necessarily been borne out by what's happened in the world economy, particularly over the last 10 years.